everybody, it's Caroline from Caroline's Veggies. Today I want to talk about chickens, my favorite subject. I'm going to talk about silky chickens. Um, they are a very popular breed right now. They have an interesting history and they have a great personality and they have some interesting traits that I'd like to talk to you about today. So this is Bob. He is a buff colored rooster silky and I got him from the Antioch Tractor Supply. And um, he's a great little buddy, aren't you? Aren't you, Bob? So the silkies have a very ancient history. Um, they come from an, um, from Asia. There is some squabbles about where exactly they came from. Most likely it was China, but they also have said perhaps India or the Java area. But they are definitely from the Far East because we know for a fact that Marco Polo, when he did his um, explorations to the Far East, he wrote about these birds in his journals, talking about how these little tiny birds had feathered feet, fur-like feathers, and um, black meat, which is very interesting. And a lot of the people that when he came back to Europe and told people about them, they didn't believe him, but in fact, they were real chicken. So these are a one-of-a-kind uh, breed. Um, they come in a numerous amounts of colors. This is buff. They come in white, which is the original color, partridge, splash, black, gray, uh, paint. Uh, there's also some new um, feather patterns, um, birchen, and a lot of other people are experimenting with different colors. And the unique thing about uh, the feather patterns is because their fur is so um, uh, different and, and, fur, and their feathers are so fur-like, it makes it in a really interesting pattern. I'm going to put this one back, Rob, because he's getting a little antsy. I'm going to pick up one of the hens, which are a little bit more calm. So hold on a second. So this is Pepper. She is actually one of the uh, examples of a partridge a silky and what it's really interesting about them like I was talking about they have some really unique qualities so one of the things is is that they have five toes and they're feathered which you can always uh, tell them apart when they're little babies trying to figure out you know what because I work at tractor supply trying to figure out um, which kind of chickens they are they also have a interesting um, feathered uh, top knot which is really cute they have a walnut comb a walnut comb and they have blue earlobes which makes them really unique. Now, um, usually you can kind of tell what kind of egg a chicken is going to lay based off the color of their earlobes. For example, most um, chickens that have reddish earlobes are gonna lay brown eggs, and most chickens that have white earlobes are gonna w lay white eggs. However, for the silky, you would think because her earlobes are blue that she would lay a blue egg. But no, in fact, she lays a small, cream tinted egg because she is a bantam chicken you can see how tiny she is another unique characteristic of them is they have the melanistic gene which means that they have black or bluish skin black meat um, and black bones now the only other breed of chicken that I can think of that has this specific trait is the I am Samani I think I'm pronouncing that right from Indonesia um, they're very rare, they're, they're all black. And um, so this is a very unique quality. You can kind of see here when I pull back on her wing, if she lets me, you can see the, um, the black feathers. I mean, the black skin. It's actually kind of hard to tell with this one because she's quite fluffy. But anyways, um, another interesting thing about them is that um, in China, I mean, even though I would never butcher, um, a silky. Um, they do eat these birds and they actually have um, a belief that the black meat with the black bones has special medicinal powers, uh, the ancient, you know, Chinese medicine. And they've actually found that it does have more carnitine in it, which does promote, promotes healing. Uh, well, that's why we eat chicken soup a lot when we're sick. There actually is some um, healing qualities to it. But I don't know if it's as as um, as such a medical life-saving thing that the Chinese think it is. 
but it does actually they have found that the black meat does have more carnitine in it. Um, another thing I'd like to talk about is that um, silkies don't do well in extreme climates. Now this is because of their feathers. Since it's more fur-like, they have a hard time because the feathers are very poofy, um, they don't, you know, curl into their body, um, they're just kind of there. They have a hard time, first of all, shedding water. So when a silky gets wet, they look like a wet mop. They have a hard time doing that. They also have a hard time with the extreme heat and the extreme cold. So they have a hard time keeping the warmth in their feathers in extreme winters, and they have a hard time keeping cool. So these are really a bantam variety that does best um, if you're going to have a heated coop for them in the winter or you know a fan on them in the summertime. They definitely need shade in the summer and they definitely need supplemental heat in the winter. Um, because I work at Tractor Supply, we did have customers come in last year that had bought silkies from us that they lost during the winter because they didn't have that supplemental heat. So that is one thing you want to think about when getting silkies. Another thing is why silkies are so popular. Well, there's a couple reasons. One, obviously, they're so cute, they're gentle, they're great uh, birds for children if, if they're getting into 4-H and want to show. They ha they're just so gentle. I mean, look how gentle Pepper is. She's just sitting here and she's being very calm and quiet. That is a characteristic of the breed. And also with the roosters, you can hear Bob in the background, um, the roosters tend to be actually a little bit friendlier than normal standard size roosters. Of course, there's always an exception, but the nice thing is of their small nature, it'll be harder for them to do damage to you. Um, and uh, even though I'm standing right by the coop, coop, their crows are actually more muted than a standard size rooster. You're still gonna hear it down the road a little bit, but it's not gonna be as bad as if you were to have like, for example, a leghorn rooster. It's just gonna be a little bit quieter. However, once a silky does start crowing, sometimes it's hard for them to stop. Um, and also, sometimes it can be due to boredom. Um, if you give them more things to do, usually they stop making so much noise. Um, another reason why a lot of people like to have silkies is if you're into hatching your eggs, so a silky is great for somebody who wants to be a self-sufficient homesteader. So let's, really a silky will hatch anything. Um, the reason why people keep them is not because of their egg laying abilities, because they only lay about 180 eggs per year. And they're small. I mean, they're great for breakfast sandwiches, but they're real small eggs. They're not like your typical eggs you're gonna see at Jewel or at Walmart, you know, the extra large. No, they're gonna be small, bantam sized eggs. However, silkies, silky hens, are wonderful mothers. They love sitting on eggs. And that's something that you wanna think about um, if you want to get into incubating eggs because they're great for that. So let's say you have a bunch of standard sized chickens and you're using them for, for either meat or you're using them for, um, for egg laying, you're selling, you're getting into selling your eggs and you're tired of wasting money at you know buying chickens at hatcheries or whatnot you want to get into being more self-sufficient this is a great breed because silkies will sit on anything they will incubate any type of egg duck eggs they will incubate um, peacock eggs they will incubate other chickens eggs it doesn't have to be silky eggs the only bad thing about them um, is that when they they are awesome brooders they'll sit on that nest till they're hatched they're not the greatest of moms. Sometimes they're, they're kind of a little dopey. Um, sometimes they will not be the greatest mothers once they're hatched. So sometimes you might have to actually take the chicks and brood them um, by your, uh, in, a, in a brooder without her, just because she just sometimes is not as attentive as she should be. But that's a lot of reasons why people have silkies for, for their um, cuteness and for their broodiness. But what else could I tell you about them? Um, I just really love them. They're awesome. They're cuddly, they're sweet, and I don't think they're great for a beginner chicken just because they're not gonna be producing eggs, you know, right away at, like other chickens do. So like, I've had these chickens since March and they start, still aren't laying yet. 
um, they just take a lot longer to mature. Whereas your production breeds are bred to spit out eggs at 18 to 22 weeks. So, uh, you know, if you're tired of waiting, then this might not be a breed for you and they're just not gonna wait, they're not gonna lay as much. But they're great friendly little chickens. They're cute, they like to cuddle, they like to sit on your lap. They're great for kids. They're great for kids getting into 4-H if they wanna show a chicken. And they're just becoming a lot more popular. And I have to say, all the people that I've met that own silkies are just really neat. There's silky clubs out there, um, a lot of people getting into it. So I hope you learned a lot from this video. And um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to message me. Um, I love talking about chickens and I hope you have a great day. Thanks a lot guys. Happy gardening, happy chickening.